Hey everybody, it's Ozone. Welcome back to Vault Hunters Friends SMP, where I am once again starting out in my cramped little house. Now, I said at the end of the last episode that I wanted to do some exploring and get into my new house. And I definitely want to do that today. That is a top, 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 top priority for me. Except I want to show you this first. <laughs> I found a way that I can make this uh, iron generator work out pretty effectively for me. I've got just a regular old dropper here. I push a button, something gets pushed into the generator, and voila, we have power. And now I want to try to figure out what is best to put into the generator. Now, I didn't pay a whole lot of attention to it, but it tells you how long something will burn for. And I get the feeling that it's going to work like a furnace. So, yeah, that bamboo was two seconds. This stick is five, interesting. Some planks, 15, okay, that's getting up there, that's nice. And this log, well, that's also 15, which is very interesting. That's not at all what I expected. I expected it to be four times because you can get four planks from a log. What about something like a fence? Yeah, it's also 15, hmm. All right, well, let's go whole hog with a bucket of lava. Oh, wow. 800 seconds with a bucket of lava. That is very, very nice. Hmm. The gears are turning. I wonder if I can get somebody on the server to, like, make a lava farm and pump stuff into buckets and then build that in my new base somewhere so that I've just constantly got lava buckets being fed into the generator. And I also think I can do an upgrade on this diamond to get to netherite. I think I've got enough netherite now. Yes, yes, thanks to scrapping all the gear. So with those two things combined, we might be able to just make this thing to be turned on all the time. Now, I feel like I need to use the energy while I've got it. You know what I mean? <laughs> but unfortunately, my two discs are getting... Pretty darn full. It sure adds up pretty quick when you can only have 63 types of items per disc. I don't really see much benefit in getting the, the higher capacity discs like 4Ks or even the 16Ks, honestly. I mean, obviously I am using this for to its fullest capacity, but still, that's probably not very common. And I did have some good comments at the end of the last episode that gave me some pointers about what I can do to add to the system and how I can make things better with applied energistics. And I'll be getting into some of those things really soon. I did build them. I just haven't played with them yet. Oh, and the question that I had at the end of the last episode where can I upgrade these things to contain more than 63 types? And the answer is no. And the question of why are there 63 types is a technical one. You see, it's kind of a design decision, I guess. Um, in the interest of making the system fast, the disk stores all the data of what's on the disk as part of the NBT data of the item. NBT is, um, I don't even remember what it stands for, but basically it's the extra data associated with an item. So your vanilla diamond helmet with enchantments the enchantments are stored in the NBT data. Or if something's named with a name tag, that's stored in the NBT data. But the problem is there's only so much memory that's available for NBT data. And if you do something that's too big, well, really, really bad things happen. If you've been with me for a long time, uh, you might remember that when I started the Vault Hunter server that was um, where I first met Swarmy and Magpie, they gave me a shulker box and the shulker box had been named and that name had caused the thing to have too much NBT data. And when I set it down, it reset the chunk back to its vanilla state, which deleted half of the building that I was standing in and crashed the server as well. So having too much data in your NBT storage is a really, really bad thing. But it also makes it really, really fast, which is the trade-off that AE has decided to make. They're going to store the data that's stored in the disk as part of the MBT data, but they make it really, really fast. Now, refined storage does not have this problem because refined storage does not store its data this way. It stores the data in a separate file. 
So they don't really have any limitations. It's just a file. But the trade-off for that is that accessing it is a lot slower, or maybe not a lot slower, but puts more demand on the server. Uh, basically, there's a performance trade-off. Now, I'll be honest, I've never noticed any problems with refined storage in terms of poor performance. But I guess there are those people out there that have such complex systems that it could be affected. But anyway, that's why it is the way that it is and why you can't get more than 63 types. But for now, I'm going to put the rest of the AE stuff aside. It was really, really interesting to see this generation, uh, especially how powerful lava was in this generator. But I want to go scout out my base location and get started mining it out. So I borrowed the Never Break Hammer, <laughs> a 100% vanilla immortality hammer. And uh, it's, I don't know whether it's uh, yo-yos or whether it's nucleotides. But I'm going to borrow it and go get to work on my new base. I've got a theme in mind and I've got a location in mind. So let's get it there. Yeah, this is what I'm thinking about. A nice, big, big mountain. And this cliff face right here is particularly interesting to me. Boop. So, what am I thinking? Well, I'm thinking like hidden laboratory base, high in the mountains. Mostly built into the mountains, but with a landing pad and some doors and stuff available, just kind of sticking outside of the mountain. I don't think I want to go all white concrete. I think I'll probably be going more of like the iron plating and that kind of block. Yeah, so again, just thinking about basically things kind of sort of sticking out of the side of the mountain, but in a way that is not easily noticeable and in a way that is maybe intended to be difficult to get to. Like I said, secret hidden base. <laughs> so I'm going to get to work digging this area out and uh, we'll come back when I've got a space. Uh, the nice thing about this kind of thing is, yes, there's a little bit of building on the outside and it's mostly just digging. And that's something that I actually like quite a bit. I like to dig, I like the grindy stuff, and I like building a little less. <laughs> so, all right, let me get some clearing done and we'll come back when I've got a big hole in the ground. And I'm back. And that honestly didn't take too long at all. <laughs> this vanilla immortality hammer is, is amazing. You know, it's always great. And this space will be a really good place to get started with. Let me drop into free cam here and uh, show you the mountain that we've got to work with. So we'll have some kind of building face sticking out of the side of the mountain here. And I'll have to worry about making some kind of helipad and some other things. Eventually, I want to be able to take this all the way through the mountain or at least be able to have little window faces in other areas of the mountain. But I think this is a really, really good start. There is a, a very large crevice here that things can fall into the base and I'm going to have to uh, secure that up. I mean, obviously there's a lot of work to do, but in terms of getting started, it's a good start. And I really like the idea. I really like the design and these sheer cliffs are going to make for like a really cool, um, you know, hidden base type of aesthetic, making it really kind of difficult to get to. I'm thinking, you know, like, like research facility, hidden research facility. Anyway, I like it. So now finally, I'm going to have room to move and breathe. <laughs> I'm so glad. I am so sick of that house. Now, obviously, there's a lot of work to do here, and initially, it's just going to be a box. But I'm also going to try to grow it in various ways over time. I mean, I could have sat here and just kept digging this mountain out and brought this, this thing all the way through on this level. But I don't like to do that and I don't wanna do that, you know? I really feel like organic building, even though it's a laboratory and that's hardly organic, but I feel like building needs to be done in, in an organic way, kind of, you know, with multiple levels and uh, to make things to make things more interesting. I don't feel like it's ever a good idea to just build all on one level. So that's what I'm going to strive to do. There'll be stairs up and down and maybe other rooms deep into the basement of the of the mountain or whatever. But for right now, I'm really happy with this start. 
uh, so now I just got to actually like decorate this square room. I hope you like the idea and I hope you're excited to see it come together like I am. And, and you know, from that one little area, I got a lot of resources, probably more cobblestone than I'll need to use for the, at least for the altar this entire session and maybe even enough diorite that I won't need to make any more. But regardless, I, I got to say, I do really appreciate the compressed blocks. It makes things so much easier for storing. And this is a bit of a hot take, but why doesn't cobblestone have a compressed variant? Everything else does, but the new 1.18 blocks cobblestone, tough, and calcite don't have a compressed variant. Why is that? You know, I think that's a pretty big shortcoming, honestly. It's just weird. Why? We can add compressed blocks for all of these other types of things. I think they should do it. And leave a comment down below if you've ever noticed that before. And if you also think it's weird, because I sure do. All right, back once again with my waystone, making this the easy way to travel back and forth. Yeah, in between episodes, I got into waystones. Now, I've said I'm going to be making a deliberate choice to not do mods that I've already done, but these quality of life are things that I think we're all going to need. Uh, all the alchemy has to be individual. I The, the looting, I mean... You're always going to do that, but these quality of life are just so good, and I just, I just couldn't pass up waystones, because I was working on a raid farm. Doctor Evilzar needed some totems of undying for his uh, altar, and well, nobody built a raid farm yet, so I built the ENX04 simple raid farm, and it's mostly safe. I've only died once using it. <laughs> it's it's better than the uh, stacking raid farm. That thing is just not safe at all. But anyway, while I was in the middle of the ocean building this, I needed a waystone. So I happened to, to jump into waystones and it's been making things so easy. As a matter of fact, there's a lot of materials that I get from the raid farm that I'm using to power my generator. All of these banners and crossbows are burnable. And actually, they give a pretty decent amount of things, too. You know, that banner gives you the same 15 seconds that anything else does. And what's also very interesting is the individual wood chunks that are vault junk from the vault, they also give you, well, they give you even more at 20 seconds. And interestingly, if you make planks out of these chunks, they also give 20 seconds of burn time. So, you know, you get a lot of banner, you get a lot of crossbows, might as well save those things and funnel them into my system, at least until I get a better system installed. But generally speaking, the wood chunks are pretty easy to get. They last a long time. They stack well up to 64 so I really think wood chunks is going to be just the way to go. And the other stuff is, well, just to use it up because I don't need my system running all the time. I only need it when I need it, usually when I'm filling out the uh, altar here. So I like the idea of using the button. You know, it works out pretty well, at least for right now anyway. Okay, we have something going here. Uh, it's not good. It's... It's something. Starting the process. It's always a very uh, challenging process to get started. So, so basically, I um, used a bunch of these laboratory blocks that I'd collected in a vault and put them down. And then I had a slightly different one. I couldn't honestly tell the difference, but I put that down over here. Kind of not feeling the flat gray here. But, uh, and then I've realized we've got these plating blocks, which are, are really easy to make. And we've got the iron farm, so we got tons of that. So I put down a bunch of that and on the wall over here. And, and then there's a variation called treading plating box. And I put some down in a wall over here and just kind of trying to get a feel for what things look like and, and what I might like. And um, so far, I'm not really liking much of any of it. This is the hard part of decorating. You know, just looking at all of the stuff that exists here is not always that easy. I can't just look at all these blocks over here and, and go, oh yeah, I like that color, for instance. 
No, it just doesn't work that way for me. I kind of got to see it in place and uh, refine it from there. And it's always a very iterative process for me with lots of changes. So the process is underway, but it's slow. <laughs> and honestly, it's a chore for me to go through this. But I'm working on it. Now, the nice thing about these laboratory blocks, well, they are a bit difficult to make because it requires both regular stone and then smooth stone, but you get these base laboratory blocks. And for that, then you have access to all of the other kinds of laboratory blocks, including this one that's on the wall, the dark metallic, and the one that's on the floor, dark gray. We've also got a metallic. Um, Honestly, I expected this list to be a whole lot more. I thought there would be a whole lot more in this list, but we do have a chrome and a light metallic too. So I'm definitely going to be playing around with some of these. And uh, while it is interesting that you use the stone cutter for it, it, it makes things nice because you only have one recipe to deal with. Okay. All right. So those are a lighter version of this with the, the little reflective bit in the corner, kind of like they're a little um, curved. And that is even lighter. We get some nice variation with those. I like that. And then this is probably just flat. No, this is even more silvery or something. Uh, very interesting. Honestly, I like these. I definitely wanted an artificial feel, but I also wanted a lighter color. So this is a very interesting um, turn. So yeah, I've been collecting stone, working up a lot of smooth stone in the regular furnaces over here, and it's going to take a little bit of time. But I think we're on a, a decent trajectory with some of these laboratory blocks. Okay, back for another update, and I think I've got something that I'm happy with. As you can see, I've done all the floor, really. Um, a combination of these, uh, I guess, dark metallic and the light metallic or chrome in a checkerboard pattern. To me, this feels very laboratory for some reason. I don't really know why. And these are sheet metal blocks from Architects Palette, and these are sheet metal blocks from Auxiliary. And I felt like they went really well together, and I felt like they were, were much better as walls. I like how the texture joins and goes all the way up. Um, it also does it on the floors, um, but only in one way. I thought it would be good for a walkway maybe, but I didn't really know what else to do. So I think the walls are gonna be better. And like I said, we've got some of these as exit blocks, I suppose. So yeah, I really, uh, I feel like this is pretty good. Additionally, I'm leaving a border of this dark gray all the way around. I feel like that does a pretty good job of making the transition between the checkerboard pattern and the stripes. So I think that's working out really well. I'm, I'm sure I'll be continuing to refine it as I go along, but yeah, I think it's time to finish building out this room and somehow bring it outside the mountain and kind of sticking out of the mountainside. That's the goal anyway. I want it to be obvious that there's something here, you know, the way it's hanging outside the mountain, but also have it be mostly inside the mountain. So with uh, probably lots of windows along this side, wherever it's coming out of the rock. But anyway, there's still a lot of building left to do, and maybe maybe I'll be able to move in here fairly soon. <laughs> I don't know. Building is always a, a, a very slow process for me, but I think I've said that. And after a little offline mining, I mean uh, building, uh, <laughs> here we are. My first room is complete. Uh, I'm not super happy with the way it turned out, but I think it does the trick in terms of the layout of what I'm after. Now, I've got this hole in the window here because I need to go get lava <laughs> occasionally, and I just don't have a good way of getting into here without flying through the window. So this is going to be open for a little bit. But as you can see, I've got these lights that I put down and these are illuminant rods. These are a different kind of block, but I think they they really work well well for um, fluorescent lights. And the ceiling is just plain plate all the way across. Most people don't care about the ceiling. I don't think I care too much about the ceiling. So I think it works out pretty well. And it looks like I didn't get things lined up quite right, but I'll, I'll fix that later. So anyway, 
Ah, it's a it's a good first room. It is plain and it is boring. I could try to do some more detailing along the way, but I think for the moment I really just want to get moved in and get all of my uh, machines and stuff here. Get my AE system set up. Get all my vault workstations and stuff set up. So all in all, I'm happy to have a space complete. <laughs> And I think this really kind of fits the vibe. And if we go into free cam here, you can see it sticking out of the side of the mountain. It actually sticks out quite far. And I think I need to do um, another layer of blocks on the underside so that we don't see the checkerboard pattern. But I, I like it. It sticks out from the mountain nicely. I think I might try to do some supports, you know, try to bring in something to give it a little, a little support, a little foundation but that'll be for a later day. The other thing I wanna do is I wanna place a uh, helipad up here, and that means I'm gonna to need to get elevators in order to access the room from the helipad. But one thing at a time, I'm just happy to have a space that I can call my own and is bigger than nine by nine blocks. <laughs> All right, well, now I get the lovely chore of moving in, which I guess kind of leads me to a couple other quality of life knowledges that I want to do. First, like I said, I want elevators so that I have a good way to get in and out of here. And I also really want Torchmaster, but unfortunately this takes two and I want to do drawers more. Now I could ask somebody on the server to make a bunch of drawers for me because you don't need the research in order to access the drawers. But I think a really big drawer setup is gonna be really important for utilizing the applied energistics in the most effective way. Basically, I wanna to try to use my applied energistic storage for all of the random stuff that doesn't have a place in a drawer. And I'm gonna to try to fill up a lot of these walls with a, with a drawer set up and just make it be an extended part of the AE system. And so for that reason, so that I don't have to rely on everybody, I'm gonna go into drawers myself. Now, unfortunately, when I do get those mod boxes again, I have watered down my pool of things that I can get from AE and will be also getting things from drawers. But it's probably fine, really. I think the drawer setup is gonna be uh, a pretty important part of the system and I don't wanna wait on it. So first and foremost, it's time to start taking down all of these things and uh, get them all moved over to where they need to be. Whee! Lovely, lovely stuff going every which way. <laughs> Alrighty, this is starting to feel much more lived in now, doesn't it? I have moved a lot of things over, but there's still an awful lot left to move. I've also made up a whole bunch of drawers, and I still need my drawer controller, but it's the start of my wall of stuff, and I still need to figure out how to make an interface with the applied energistics, but uh, my drives are full, of course. I had previously made eight of these storage cells uh, in order to, to build out my drive array here. And the cost of the cells themselves wasn't really that bad. It was uh, surprising, honestly. But the cost of the housing, on the other hand, that was kind of rough with chromatic steel being used as well as chromatic iron. But I went and did a little off-camera mining because I am really low on chromatic iron. I really haven't found any chromatic iron rooms in the vaults, and uh, I really haven't found very much when I've gone out mining either. They are, hmm, well, shall we say, very difficult to find, honestly, and the ones that I found didn't have that much chromatic iron. But I do have 100 pieces of chromatic iron and 25 pieces of chromatic steel. Let's get to the drive parts that I was really, really interested in, as that's the most important thing right now, just being able to utilize my storage, you know? I only have space for six drives, so that's all I'm gonna make right now. But six housings and six storage components means six drives, and honestly, that will do a lot. Oh, hey, I can actually have two more. Okay, well, let's do that. And two more. Nice. Full house. Full house of 1K storage things, but that's, that's okay. I can easily add another drive, and I do still have some of these higher capacity cells that I can put in. But honestly, just that will go a long way toward helping me out right now. 
Well, I guess I made too many drive housings. I've used up all my chromatic steel, and I think this ME interface is part of what I need to access the drawers through their controller, which I still don't have. Um, but I think it requires this storage bus, which is based on the interface and some pistons. And as usual, I don't have the resources. So I think this might be it. <laughs> I had wanted to get a lot more done on my storage system, and I think I'm just going to have to do it in between episodes. I did get a lot done here in my new base, and I'm really happy to have room to just spread out. But I think I'm at the extent of what I can do in terms of setting up my storage system. I've just run out of materials, and that is the unfortunate truth of the matter here. I need both an energy cell and a storage bus, and I can make neither one. <laughs> so... I guess it's time to run a vault, and maybe run a vault in focusing on wooden so that I can get some carbon. Because, yeah, you can get carbon from ornates as well, but you can also get carbon from wooden. But I also want to get mod boxes. So I think if I make a crystal and put a, a wooden catalyst on here, I could maybe try to get some mod boxes and some carbon both, and just focus on the woodens. Now, I've not done anything with catalysts yet. Uh, yeah, I haven't even made a catalyst or done anything with that. So, all right, well, craft a catalyst infusion table. That sounds like, that sounds like a good thing to do. But it takes chromatic steel. Of course it does. Yep, this is my life. This is my life. I think it's just time to wrap up this episode. And we'll run some vaults in between episodes. Try to stock up on some carbon so that I can continue with this progression. All right, well, I guess that's it for now. I really hoped you enjoyed the building, and I would very much like to hear your feedback and possibly ideas for how I can make this space look better. And like I said, it's a space. It's bland. It's kind of meant to be, but at the same time, I would like it to be a little less bland. You know what I mean? I kind of figured it would get more interesting as I installed stuff. You know, like all of this AE stuff looks like computers, but it's not really going that way yet. Anyway, if you have any ideas about what I might be able to do with this space, please leave a comment down below. I would love to hear it. So I guess that's it for now. I will catch you in the next episode. And remember, be excellent to each other. I'm out.